Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I have been dying to try the three new Primo colors, which is Cayenne, Slate Gray, and Navy. I'm so glad they brought Navy back, because that has always been one of my favorite colors. And so I just rolled out, what I did is I took one section from each bar of clay, just one, cut one section off, and rolled them out. And I'm going to make some stripes. Now, I have made stripes before using uh, scrap clay and different things. But this time I'm going to show you how to build scra uh, scraps that, I mean, a stripe that might add a little bit more interest, particularly if you're trying to use specific colors. So I thought these three colors really went well together. And you're going to need a cutter. And this cutter is about two and a quarter inches, a round cutter, and then a small cutter. Um, and I'll show you what those are for in a little bit. But I've also got some scrap clay. This is uh, some ends from my brain cane tutorial that I did not too long ago. And I've just rolled that into a cylinder. Just trying to make sure that all these little seams are closed in so they don't trap any air. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut strips. I've also got some yellow gold glitter. And I got this because I really like these colors, but I think a little bit of sparkle would really add some interest. And I'm just going to cut some strips. I'm going to cut this one off because it's kind of ragged on the end. And I'm going to cut some strips in different widths and, um, you know, just to try to give me some options. I'm probably going to use more of the gold glitter, the yellow gold glitter, than I will the others. So let me put those on a piece of patty paper so that they'll be easy to pick up. And I'm going to do the same with all three of these colors. Um, this new clay is still a little sticky. So I'm just going to trim up some ends here. And trim up that side to make sure it's straight. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. I'm going to cut, like this was a thin strip. And I'll cut one a little bit wider. And just, I'm not particular about the length. And I'm, the width, I mean, and I'm going to cut four of each. That should be enough, but if not, I've got plenty here to cut from. And this is the gray. This new clay is so sticky. I'm sure after it ages a little bit, it will be much better. I'm going to square up these ends. And this edge and I'm going to cut some stripes from this and I'll do I'll do a thicker one first because it's easier to pick up and maybe a thin one in here somewhere it's not really doesn't really matter because they're all going to be twisted up anyway but I was thinking maybe the different widths might give it a little bit of a different flare. And then this cayenne is a beautiful shade of red. I love this red. Again, I'm just going to square up some of the ends so that my stripes will be fairly the same same size the 
this is what I like when it sticks to the glass. And I'll do one more. Like I said, I've got more clay here if I need to cut more. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of mash this in a little bit to make it about three quarters of an inch in diameter. And I'm going to start with a gold and try to keep these straight because you want to cover the entirely uh, cover this strip here. So let me put a red next to the gold on this side and just make sure they fit up next to each other. And I'll put a blue on this side. But just make sure they match. And you turn it a little bit. And I'm going to put a gray next to the blue. And I think I'm going to put a gray next to the red. And I will need to cut some more. I just wasn't sure how many it would take to go around this. And then I'm going to add another gold. Because I want a lot of sparkle in this. So there's a gold on that side, and I'll add a gold on this side. Why not? Or gold glitter. It's not just gold. It's going to have sparkle to it. This one got twisted. And these are all rolled out to the thickest setting of my pasta machine. Okay, so I think I'll put a blue here. And a red. These are just such nice colors. But I'm so glad they brought back the navy because navy was one of my favorite colors and I use it a lot. And I hated using it when it wasn't available, but I had some in my drawer and so now I can use it more freely knowing that you can get it too. So any of my old videos that showed me using navy. Now you can get that navy at the store, at your favorite clay store. And let's see. Um, I think I'll put a blue on here. And another gold. I just want lots of gold in this. And just try to keep these. They don't have to be perfectly straight. Because like I said, we're just going to twist them up anyway. 
and I'll put a gray. And like I said, these can be any colors you want. You can use your pearl colors. You can use, if your favorite colors are pink and purple, you can use pink and purple. And you maybe use the white gold glitter. see gray blue red so I guess another red would go there and I need a blue Uh, put a gray in there. I probably need a thicker gray. That might be too thick. Try to get it in there. And you can see my cylinder now is totally covered. Let me cut these ends off. doesn't really matter. I'm doing this and I don't really have to, but I can get a little anal sometimes with my clay. So let me just do it this way. There we go. Look how well these colors go together. Isn't that kind of cool? So, now what I'm going to do, let me move everything. There's the rest of my gray. Put my gold back with my gold. And I'll put all these back with my color when I'm done. gold glitter I'm sorry I, ha I keep my gold glitter and my white gold the yellow gold glitter and the white gold glitter rolled out into a sheet here because it's a Dickens to, to condition and I probably added a little bit of liquid clay to this to get it smoothed out. There. So now we've got this rod of clay. And I'm going to just start rolling it. But before we do any more, just look at the colors, how well they go together. I'm just going to roll it out until it gets a little skinnier. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it on my work surface. I'm going to hold this end, and I'm going to start twisting it. Oh, I love it already. Kind of push it in. And just keep twisting and do it slowly because you don't want to force your clay. But you can just keep going like this. Make sure you get the ends. 
so you don't have to cut off but so much. Smooth it out. Maybe make it smaller again and then twist some more. And you want to twist until these stripes are sideways. And you can see every time I twist it, it gets a little bit closer to that. And I think that's pretty close. The ends may not be. Maybe just twist a little bit more on the ends. The more, the more of the ends that you can get twisted into this pattern, the less of the design you'll lose. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a twist just to make them a little bit more perpendicular or parallel, depending on which way you're looking at it. And then I'm going to start pushing in from the ends. just to make it a little shorter. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. Then I'm going to start mashing it down. You don't want to make it much wider. So start rolling this way. I love that. Can you see the sparkle from the gold? The gold glitter? The yellow gold glitter? Whoops. I'm going to show you two different things you can do. I'm going to take this. I love that I can move my pasta machine. And I'm going to take it with the stripes running up and down and put it through my pasta machine. This is also still on the thickest setting. So there we are with this. Isn't that pretty? So what I'm going to do, and well, I was going to show you another thing you could do with this. Let me find a spot. And cut this in half. This is the side I'm going to be using, but I want to show you, if you don't want to leave it in stripes, I do. I want to leave it in stripes. You can make sure this is stuck down on your work surface. And you can take just a little knitting needle or something, something that's blunt. And maybe, let me put it on my line so that I can measure my drags. This, this is just a drag technique. And I'm going to go in between. So this is going to be three-eighths of an inch. And just drag down this way. And pick it up and flip it around. This really isn't dragging that much. And then go in between where you did before and dry, come back. This is in the opposite direction.
And I'm going to put this under here and try to roll the lines out that I pressed into it. You want to just get rid of those the lines where you uh, ran your rod through it. You can see here, you see little white lines, but over here they're closing in. That means that this paper is making contact with the clay now, which means those little ridges have been smoothed out. The ends haven't been done very well, but I just wanted to show you the different effect you can get this didn't manipulate that much, but you can see it's not straight anymore. It's more of a little bit of a zigzag pattern. So if you like that better, do this to the whole, your whole sheet. But I think I'm going to leave this the way it is. I like the stripes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my cutter, turn it upside down, and this is going to be the sharp edge. And you can pick a side, but I think both of these are pretty much the same. Lay it over the cutter. And very carefully, because you don't want to cut it yet, very carefully start pressing on the center here. Let me cut a little bit of this off so it isn't so much weight. But start stretching the clay down into the cutter and do this slowly because you don't want to cut your clay, you just want to make a dome that goes down. I'm going to make a hollow bead. But make this as deep as you can get it. You can press with your thumb or your finger. I'm afraid I'm going to jab it with my fingernail with my thumb. For some reason, my thumbnails have gotten very long. Just a little bit more. And then what you need to do, and I'm just going to use this. No, maybe I won't. You need a color for the background, and maybe I'll go back and use that gold. Sorry, I was trying to get this off without picking it up, but it's not going to happen. So let me... Because this other piece isn't going to be thick enough, wide enough. Let me cut another piece off of this gold. recondition all that, but this needs to go through the pasta machine because it hasn't been conditioned. Reconditioned. So let me just fold it in half and run it through. And I need to do this just a couple of times just to make sure it's reconditioned. So I'm going to turn the sound off so that you don't have to listen to the pasta machine.
Okay, so this is reconditioned again. I just wanted to make sure that everything was going to be nice and soft. And I'm going to lay this over the top of this and try to keep it as flat as I can. And just very lightly press it along here. Because what you want to do is seal in that air that's inside, inside here. Now we're going to flip this over and see how that's still sitting up. Let me just press this down a little bit just to make sure that it's sealed. I'm not cutting it yet. I'm just pressing this in. Now I'm going to take this small cutter and I like this one because usually the clay sticks to this and you know I can pull it out. But I'm going to find a place now I've got to decide whether I want my stripes to go up and down, which I think I do. I'm going to take this cutter and make sure it's where you want it because you only get one shot. And press down. And you've got to be careful because you don't want to lose the air. Just make sure that's done well. Then you can press this down to do your final cut. And this didn't stick, so I'm going to have to pull it out. There you have a hollow pendant. You bake it just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and bake it and then I'll be back. Okay, my piece is out of the oven and I absolutely love it. But you can see the, how thick it is and this is hollow. So, you know, it's, it's just really great to be able to do something like this. Now, you'll notice if I lay this to where it's going to, the way it'll hang, my stripes ended up being a little bit at a diagonal. And that's my fault because I didn't place this circle in the right place. It should have been over just a little bit, but that's okay. I kind of like the diagonal. So what I, what I would do with this is... And I don't, couldn't find my suede. Evidently, that's something else that I either sold or whatever. But I'm going to just stick the loop through this satin cord. And hang it this way. And that's the way I would use this type of a, this shape of a pendant. Um... I could put some polish on it, some uh, glaze or varathane is what I would use, but I don't think I will because I think I like the way it looks, just the way it is. So the other thing I was going to do is I had this ring blank, and I still had some clay left over. Actually, I put it all in here, didn't I? So I don't have the circle. I don't think I have a piece of the flat. Lines. Let me see if this will fit. No, it won't. Um, I just don't think there's anything of the pretty squares left. So I do have this, which is the one that is a little bit wavy because of the um, dragging technique that I did. But I think I will still use it for a ring. This is one of the Lisa Pavelka ring blanks that I got at uh, Hobby Lobby when they were 
being discontinued. And I have I just used this to cut my clay. I cut another layer of just the scrap that was left over to put in the bottom. I'm going to lay this in there. Now because it's the exact same size, it might need a little coaxing. I actually could use a little bit more padding underneath. But you'll get the idea. Just to show you something you can do with some of the scrap pieces from this beautiful cane that we made. But I would bake that and then I would have my necklace and a ring to match. So there you go. Another polymer clay project. I hope you liked it. Oh, there's a... Now that's still the wavy. I said, but I hope you like this and uh, well, would give it a try. So thanks again for watching and I will be back again soon with another polymer clay video. Thanks. Bye-bye.